What's up, homies? I've received multiple requests now to do a lesson proving Hall's theorem for bipartite graphs. So in today's Wrath of Math lesson, as you can probably guess, we're finally going to do it. We're going to prove Hall's theorem. Going to be a lot of fun. Before I delay any longer, let's quickly read the theorem. Let G be a bipartite graph with partite sets U and W, where U is the smaller partite set, so U has as many or fewer vertices than W does. Then, G contains a matching of cardinality U, in other words, a matching that covers the smaller partite set U, if and only if, for every subset S of that smaller partite set U, the cardinality of S is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of S, which is the set of all vertices adjacent to vertices of S. So S has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. So what this theorem is telling us is that we'll be able to find a matching that covers the smaller partite set if and only if every single subset of the smaller partite set has sufficiently, sufficiently many neighbors in the other partite set to match those vertices up. Now, if you, would, if you need an introduction at all to matchings or you want more of an introduction to this theorem specifically, I'll leave links in the description to my lesson on matchings and my lesson introducing Hall's theorem. Check those out and you'll be more than ready to come back and join us for this wonderful proof. Last thing I'll mention, this part here at the end, uh, every subset of the smaller partite set having as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors, this is called Hall's condition. So another way you could state the theorem is that G is a bipartite graph with partite sets, blah de blah de blah de blah and so on, if and only if G satisfies Hall's condition. That would be another way to state the theorem. And of course, Hall's theorem, it's sometimes called Hall's marriage theorem. Uh, it also has a set theoretic formulation. In this video, we're proving the graph theory form because that's all we do is graph theory. So without further ado, we're not going to erase this. We're going to flip the board around and do the proof on the other side. I have not flipped the board around on this channel yet, but it's, it's really handy because it means if I, if I screw this take of the video up, then I don't have to rewrite Hall's theorem. I can just flip the whiteboard around and start again. But with any luck, we're not going to screw it up. And uh, this is going to be the first take and the last take, and we'll be good to go. So let's get into the proof of the theorem. It's an if and only if theorem. So we got to prove two directions. One direction is super easy. The other direction's a bit trickier. So it's fun. Classic. Really classic. Let's get into it. For starters, Let's say we've got our bipartite graph G that has partite sets U and W and an edge set we'll call E. The edge set isn't super important to us, but that's what we'll call it. And of course, we're going to say that U is the smaller partite set. So the cardinality of U is less than or equal to the cardinality of W. Of course, it's possible that U and W have the same number of vertices, in which case either one could play the role of the smaller partite set in our proof. Okay, so we want to prove that this graph contains a matching that covers the smaller partite set U if and only if the graph satisfies Hall's condition. For starters, let's prove that if the graph contains a matching covering U, then it satisfies Hall's condition. So I'll write this in orange. We're going to assume that there exists a matching that covers U. So we'll just say let M, let M be a matching, a matching of G, a matching in G covering the smaller partite set U. And I'm assuming that you're all familiar with matchings and uh, what it means for matching to cover U. Otherwise, you should have left at the beginning of the lesson to check out those links I recommended. But I'll just say it here real quick. A matching, it's a set of edges such that no two edges share common vertices. And when we say that the matching covers U, we mean that there exists an edge in M incident with each vertex of the set U. So every vertex of U is incident with one of those edges in the matching. All right. 
So we want to show that the existence of this matching that covers U implies, it implies that for every subset S of the smaller partite set U, the cardinality of S is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of S. And what I'm actually going to do is put G in the subscript of that N of S. So this is the neighborhood of S in G. That's not an important thing to specify in this direction of the proof because we're only talking about G, but in the other direction we're going to be talking about multiple graphs at once, so we're going, to, we're going to write the name of the graph in the subscript of this neighborhood notation to make things clear. And of course, as it turns out, this matching does indeed imply this inequality for all subsets S of U. Because if we take a subset S of the smaller partite set U, since this matching M exists, every vertex of that subset has been matched to a vertex in the other partite set W, which means that all of the vertices of S are adjacent to distinct vertices in the other partite set W. That's what a matching is. It's a set of edges. Right? It's a set of edges that don't have any common vertices. So if there's a matching covering U, then any, for any subset of U, all of its vertices have been matched to distinct vertices in the other partite set. So it must be the case that S has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. Otherwise, such a, such a matching certainly couldn't exist. So the matching directly implies this inequality for every subset S of the smaller partite set U. If there was a subset of U that had fewer vertices, or excuse me, had more vertices than it had neighbors, then this matching couldn't possibly exist. So first direction of the proof is super easy. It's Step one, step two, you're done. It's a very direct implication. So I've got to go ahead and erase that. If that's not clear to you, uh, rewind, listen to the explanation, think about it, whatever you got to do. We're moving on. We're going to erase this, and we're moving on to the other direction of the proof, which is where most of our focus will lie. For that first direction as well, you could also do it by a, a quick contradiction or a contrapositive proof if you wanted. So for the next direction of the proof, actually let me write this in blue, we're going to assume that G satisfies Hall's condition. So no, actually let me write it in black. So we're assuming G satisfies Hall's condition. So we're assuming that for every subset S of the smaller partite set U, the cardinality of S is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of S in G. So every subset of the smaller partite set has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. We want to show that this implies that G has a matching that covers the smaller partite set, equivalent to saying that G has a matching of cardinality equal to the cardinality of U. Now we're going to prove this by strong induction. So we'll start off with a base case. We're going to apply induction on the cardinality of the smaller partite set. So our base case, now I'll switch to blue. Our base case, which is super easy, is when the cardinality of U is equal to one. Assume the graph satisfies Hall's condition and its smaller partite set has one vertex. This is the base case of our induction proof. All right, so does this graph satisfying Hall's condition and its smaller partite set having exactly one vertex, does this grant us the existence of a matching? Yes, it certainly does, because since the smaller partite set has one vertex, that one vertex must have at least one neighbor in the other partite set W by Hall's condition. So let's say that one, the one vertex in U is little u. And since the graph satisfies Hall's condition, U has at least one neighbor in G. And so say that neighbor is W. So UW is an element of the edge set. And this is a matching that covers the entirety of U, uh, the partite set U, because U only has that one vertex, 
little u. So one more time, partite set has one vertex. Since the graph satisfies Hall's condition, that whole partite set has got to have at least one neighbor, and so just match that vertex to its guaranteed one neighbor, and that's a matching. That edge is a matching that covers the smaller partite set u, and we're good to go. That's the base step of the induction proof. So then, of course, this is how, and this is strong induction, we're using strong induction. So now, the induction hypothesis, right? We assume that our result holds for all bipartite graphs whose smaller partite sets, whose smaller partite sets have less than k vertices for some natural number k. Then, in the induction step of the proof, we need to show that our theorem also holds for bipartite graphs whose smaller partite sets have exactly k vertices. And again, the induction hypothesis is assuming our result for all bipartite graphs whose smaller partite sets have less than k vertices. So then if we can prove that it also holds when the smaller partite set has k vertices, Hopefully you know how strong induction works. It's like a string of dominoes. It uh, guarantees us that the result is true for all bipartite graphs. Let me take a sip of water and we'll continue. All right, so let us get into this. This uh, induction proof is going to be proof by cases. We're gonna get into proof by cases, but we have just a little bit of work to do first. So we know, of course, the cardinality view, it's equal to k, and k is greater than 1, right? Because we already proved the result is true when the cardinality view is equal to 1. So now we're saying, assume it's true for all values less than some value k. It's got to be greater than 1, because we already proved it for 1. So u has at least one vertex. Again, let's call that little u. u has at least one vertex. In fact, it has at least two vertices, since we're assuming k is greater than 1. Then again, since g satisfies Hall's condition, u must have at least one neighbor in g. So we can, of course, match u to that one neighbor. Let's again call that neighbor w. So u w is an element of the edge set. This seems kind of like exactly what we just did. Why are we doing this? We're doing it so that we can get rid of these two vertices, u and w, that have, are, that have now been matched. And so we can consider a graph with a smaller partite set after we delete these vertices, which means we can use our induction hypothesis. It's very sly, it's very clever. All right, so we've matched u to w. Now we're going to consider a vertex-induced subgraph. It's gonna be really important that you understand this notation we're gonna use here because we're gonna use it a couple more times. So we're going to say, let H, let H be the subgraph of G. It's the subgraph of G induced by a particular vertex set. What vertex set do you think? It's the subgraph induced by this vertex set. The smaller partite set U after deleting the vertex little u, which we already matched to W, unioned with the other partite set W minus that vertex w that's already been matched with u. So this notation, this is the notation for vertex-induced subgraph. It means take the vertices in this set, so the vertices in u minus u, and the vertices in w minus the vertex little w, and then take all of their adjoining edges. So any edges that existed between these vertices in g, take those edges and put them in our graph h, as well. If you need a bit more of a recap on vertex-induced subgraphs, I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson. All right, my friends, I feel like the proof hasn't even really started because we, we still haven't gotten to the good part that's actually a challenge. Remember this, like I said, this is going to be by cases. So we start off with case one. What do you think case one is? Well, case one is so simple that we don't really even have to write anything down. Let me try to explain it very clearly. Case one is if the graph H satisfies Hall's condition. So let's point a couple things out here. We know that U minus U is the smaller partite set of H. We know that because U is the smaller partite set when compared to W, and then in H, 
we've reduced both of their cardinalities by one because we've deleted one vertex from each of them. So u minus u is also going to be our smaller partite set in H. So if H satisfies Hall's condition and we use our induction hypothesis, that guarantees us a matching that covers the smaller partite set, which is u minus u. Now, we know we can use our induction hypothesis because u minus u certainly has a cardinality less than the cardinality of u, right? The cardinality of u minus u is less than the cardinality of u, which means, of course, that it's less than k. And we assumed our result for all bipartite graphs whose smaller partite sets have fewer than k vertices. Since we deleted a vertex from u to get u minus u, its cardinality is obviously less than the cardinality of u, which means it's less than k, which means we can use our induction hypothesis to guarantee the existence of a matching that covers that smaller partite set. Then, all we do is combine that matching with the edge uw, and bam, that's a matching that covers the entire partite set u, which proves the result in that case. So again, if h, this is case one, if h satisfies Hall's condition, we can use our induction hypothesis to guarantee the existence of a matching that covers the smaller partite set u minus u. Then combine that matching with the edge uw, and we have a matching that completely covers the smaller partite set u in our desired graph G. And we know, of course, that the matching in H doesn't contain U or W because U and W have been deleted from the graph H. So that's case one, bada bing, bada boom, case one is done. We're on to case two, which is the super fun part of the proof where we actually have to work a little bit harder. Not too hard, not too hard, it's still, still super fun, just a little bit harder. So. We'll start writing in orange. This is gonna be case two. What is case two? Well, case two, of course, is when H does not satisfy Hall's condition. So we assume for case two that H doesn't satisfy Hall's condition, which is the same as assuming that H, uh, it's the same as assuming that there's a particular type of subset of the smaller partite set, right? To assume that H doesn't satisfy Hall's condition is to assume that there exists a subset, we'll call X, a subset of U minus U, the smaller partite set, such that the cardinality of X is less, is, excuse me, greater than its number of neighbors in the graph H, because it's the graph H that doesn't satisfy Hall's condition. So there must exist this subset of the smaller partite set such that the subset has more vertices than it has neighbors in the graph H. So notice that H there in the subscript. Now, there's a very important point we're going to have to make here that is actually the key to the rest of the proof. But there's one other quick and easy thing we want to get out of the way first before we jump into that very important point. So let's get this easy thing out of the way, and then we'll move on to, to what's really the key to the rest of the proof. So let's quickly define another vertex-induced subgraph. We're going to call this F1. It's going to be the subgraph of G induced by what vertex set? It's the subgraph of G induced by this vertex set X, which is a subset of U minus U, union with the neighborhood of x in the graph g. So, so this is taking all the neighbors of x in the graph g, not just the neighbors of x in h. Now, we're basically going to do what we just did with h in case 1. We're going to do that with f1. So, we want to use our induction hypothesis to guarantee the existence of a matching that covers the smaller partite set of F1. In order to do that, there's just a couple, couple things we need to make sure of. First, we want to identify the smaller partite set. We know for sure that X is the smaller partite set because G satisfies Hall's condition. X is a subset of U minus U, and so it's also a subset of U, 
And so in G, the cardinality of X has to be less than or equal to the number of neighbors of X in G. So X is definitely the smaller partite set because again, G satisfies Hall's condition, X is a subset of U, so on and so forth. Okay, and then we just need to guarantee that X has fewer vertices than U, fewer than K vertices, because that's where we can use our induction hypothesis. And indeed it does. How do we know that? Because X is a subset of U minus U. So at most, X has one less vertex than U does. So then the, the last thing we need to ensure is that F1 satisfies Hall's condition. If so, then we can use our induction hypothesis. And yes, indeed, F1 does satisfy Hall's condition. I, I sort of talked about this in my last lesson, introducing Hall's theorem, so you could check that out if you want, but we'll, we'll go over it here. Why does F1 satisfy Hall's condition? Well, because, again, X is a subset of the smaller partite set U and G, satisfies Hall's condition. So every subset of X is also a subset of U. And since G satisfies Hall's condition, all of those subsets have as many or fewer vertices than they have neighbors in G. The only thing affecting that inequality is their neighbors, right? So if we've got the subset, the only thing that's going to make this inequality true or false is the number of their neighbors. We've taken all their neighbors into the graph F1, right? We took X and we took all of the neighbors of X. We took the complete neighborhood of X in G. So all of those inequalities will still be true. A subset of X is just a subset of U, which since G satisfies Hall's condition, those subsets have to have as many or fewer vertices than they have neighbors. We've taken all of their neighbors into V1, or excuse me, into F1, so F1 still satisfies Hall's condition. Thus, we can apply our induction hypothesis to guarantee the existence of a matching that covers the smaller partite set X. Oh yeah. All right, so let's write that down. There exists. There exists a matching. There exists a matching that we'll call M covering covering the smaller partite set X. All right, so all we have left to do is to guarantee the existence of a matching that covers all the vertices in U besides the ones that we've just now matched in that subset X. Now, before we move on, let me just explain one more time how we know F1 satisfies Hall's condition. For F1 to satisfy Hall's condition, Every subset of X needs to have as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. Now we know that all of those subsets satisfy that inequality in G because every subset of X is also a subset of U, the entire smaller partite set. We have taken all of their neighbors into this graph F1, so they certainly still satisfy that inequality, so that's how we're able to apply the induction hypothesis. Okay, awesome. Now, before we move on to what's gonna be the final beautiful string of inequalities, we gotta get the key, the key I mentioned earlier, this key that will unlock the door to completion of the proof that we'll need in just a little bit, but we're gonna get the key now. So we'll be walking leisurely, strolling to the end of this proof with supreme confidence that it's gonna be a piece of cake. All right, let's do it. Let's get the key. So. We said earlier, right, case two is assuming that H doesn't satisfy Hall's condition, which is to assume the existence of this part, this uh, subset of the smaller partite set X, which has more vertices than it has neighbors. That's what it means to assume that H doesn't satisfy Hall's condition. What do we know, what else do we know about the cardinality of X? Well, like I've said several times, X is a subset of U. So, X did satisfy this inequality in the original graph G. So that means the cardinality of X was certainly less than or equal to the number of neighbors of X in the original graph G because G satisfies Hall's condition. All right, so what do you notice here? 
the cardinality of x goes from being less than or equal to its number of neighbors in g. Let me actually rewrite this just so it's clear to read because it looks a little sloppy. So this is the cardinality of x is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of x in g because g satisfies Hall's condition. We know this is true. So what do you notice? The cardinality of x goes from being less than or equal to its number of neighbors in g to all of a sudden being greater than its number of neighbors in h. Now, how did its number of neighbors change from g to h? Well, the only possible change is that its number of neighbors was reduced by 1 because x is a subset of u, and this is a bipartite graph. So all of its neighbors exist in the partite set w. We only deleted one vertex from w, that vertex little w. So at most, the number of neighbors of x in g has been reduced by 1 in h, which means that in g, the cardinality of x must have, in fact, been exactly equal to its number of neighbors. This had to have been true because when we reduce this number by 1, going from g to h by deleting that single vertex w, thus reducing the number of possible neighbors of x by 1, the, inequ the equality goes from equal to to an inequality of greater than. So the number of vertices in x had to have been equal to its number of neighbors in g. Otherwise, if, if the number of neighbors of x in g was greater than the number, of the number of vertices in x, then we couldn't have possibly completely flipped this inequality by reducing the number of neighbors by just one, deleting that single uh, vertex w. So it must have been the case that x had exactly as many vertices as it had neighbors in g. Like I said, this is the key to the final string of the proof that we're about to get to. So if you need me to explain that again, rewind the video, pause the video, look at this, think about it a little bit. This is our key to completion. All right, so now my friends, we are going to define or describe one more vertex-induced subgraph that is going to get us, we're, we're going to apply the induction hypothesis one last time, and this is going to get us to the end. So let's, let's say, let, let F2, let F2 be the subgraph of G induced by what vertex set do you think? Well, we want all the vertices of U except the ones in X that have already been matched by that matching M. So we're going to take U minus X unioned with what? Well, we still want to match all the vertices in W as well, except the ones in the neighborhood of X in G, because those have already been matched as well. So U minus X union with W minus the neighborhood of X in the graph G. So take all of these vertices and any edges that join them in G, take those as well. That is our vertex-induced subgraph. Now, a couple things we'll point out. U minus X is certainly the smaller partite set of this graph. We know that because the cardinality of U is less than or equal to the cardinality of W. We've reduced both U and W by the same, by the same amount. So U minus X is definitely the smaller partite set. Additionally, we know that the cardinality of u minus x, I guess I'll write this real quick, the cardinality of u minus x we know is less than the cardinality of u, which means it's the cardinality of u equals k, so this cardinality is less than k. How do we know that? Because x is non-empty. We know x is non-empty because its cardinality is greater than a number that cannot be less than zero. So the cardinality of x has to be at least one, so x is non-empty, so we have deleted some vertex from u here, so its cardinality is definitely less than the cardinality of u. All that is to say that if we can show that F2 satisfies Hall's condition, 
we can apply our induction hypothesis, which was assuming our result for all bipartite graphs whose smaller partite sets have fewer than k vertices to conclude that there exists a matching that covers the smaller partite set. So all we have left to do is show that F2 satisfies Hall's condition. Bah! Then we'll just about be done. We'll just about be done. We'll just have to write another line or two. And this is the fun, beautiful point of the proof that I really like. So to show that F2 satisfies Hall's condition, what do we do? We got to take an arbitrary subset from the smaller partite set. So we'll say let X prime be a subset of the smaller partite set U minus X. Now what we want to show is that the cardinality of X prime is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of X prime in the graph F2. And also, notice the difference here between F2 and F1. We were very easily able to say F1 satisfies Hall's condition because G satisfies Hall's condition. We just took some vertices from U and we took all their neighbors. But in F2, we took some vertices from U, but we didn't necessarily take all their neighbors because we deleted all the neighbors of X. Some of those neighbors of X could also be neighbors of vertices in this partite set, which is why we got to do some more work. So again, we want to show the cardinality of X prime is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of X prime in F2. So we would like to start off with an inequality involving X prime. What's an inequality we know is true involving X prime? Here's one. How about the cardinality of X union X prime? What do we know about this cardinality? Well, x union x prime is just a subset of u, since x and x prime are both subsets of u. So since g satisfies Hall's condition, we know that the cardinality of x union x prime is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of x union x prime in the graph g, the graph g that we know satisfies Hall's condition. So we know this is true. Okay. That's a good start, but we'd like to break things down here a little more so that we could do some work with them. Pretty easy first step in breaking this down. What's another way we could write the cardinality of x union x prime? How do x and x prime relate? Well, they're disjoint sets. We know that because x prime is a subset of u minus x, so they can't possibly have any vertices in common. And so the cardinality of their union is equal to the sum of their cardinalities. Beautiful. That is equal to that because x and x prime are disjoint. So the cardinality of x plus the cardinality of x prime is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of x union x prime in the graph G. So now what's a way we could rewrite this that is more useful? Well, here's one very beautiful way we could do it. First, we could count up all of the neighbors of x in the graph G, which very possibly includes some neighbors of x prime. Then all we have left to do is count the neighbors of x prime that are not also neighbors of x. Now that's really easy for us to do thanks to our new graph F2. All we have to do is add the, the cardinality of the neighborhood of x prime in the graph F2. This way, we're counting all the neighbors of x, which may include some neighbors of x prime, and then we're counting all of the rest of the neighbors of x prime that are not also neighbors of x. We know we're not double counting any neighbors of x in this number here because f2 doesn't contain any neighbors of x because we subtracted them from the graph. Okay, my friends, do you see the beautiful thing that we can do now with this wonderful inequality that I'm tempted to underline, but I shouldn't because there is a more beautiful inequality right around the corner. What can we do? Look at this. The cardinality of x on one side, the cardinality of the neighborhood of x in g on the other. Those two numbers are equal. So they're equal. Oh yeah. So we can subtract them from both sides, leaving us with the cardinality of x prime is less than or equal to the cardinality of the neighborhood of x prime in our graph f2.
Ta-da! So, this inequality demonstrates that F2 satisfies Hall's condition. We took an arbitrary subset of the smaller partite set, and this inequality shows that that subset, X prime, has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors in F2. So, we can apply our induction hypothesis. Again, remember the stuff we went over earlier, that X prime has fewer vertices than U, so we can apply our induction hypothesis, guaranteeing us the existence of a matching that covers U minus X in F2. I guess we'll write this in black, and this is just about the end. There exists a matching. This is by our induction hypothesis. There exists a matching we'll call M prime covering covering that smaller partite set u minus x. Did I say that it covers x prime a minute ago? I think I might have. What I meant is that it covers u minus x. And okay, that's, that's basically the end. What do you think is the last thing we should do? Last thing we should do is write m union m prime and my friends. That's the proof. That is the proof. m union M prime is a matching that covers the entire smaller partite set U of our original graph G, whose smaller partite set had cardinality K. Because remember, the matching M covered the set X, which was a subset of U, and then the matching M prime covers U minus X. That's all the other vertices of U. And of course, M matched the vertices of x to the neighborhood of x in G, and in, in F2, which is where the matching M prime exists, all the neighbors of x have been removed, so we know we're not hitting those vertices again, so M union M prime is a matching that completely covers that partite set U, and so, in a bipartite graph with partite sets U and W, where U is the smaller partite set, there exists a matching that covers the smaller partite set if and only if that graph satisfies Hall's condition. Hall's condition is that to, to satisfy Hall's condition means that every subset of the smaller partite set has as many or fewer vertices than it has neighbors. Bada bing, bada boom. That is the proof of Hall's theorem for bipartite matchings in graph theory. Really fun proof. Uh, and I hope this video helped you understand the proof. I hope it was fun. I certainly had fun. I really need to drink some water. So let me know in the comments for sure if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Always appreciate those video requests. Wish I could do more of them, but I get to those that I can. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I think I don't see a ton of other... I did, you know, a little search. I don't see many other or like any other, maybe one other video proving Hall's theorem and graph theory. So this is the new best video on YouTube proving this theorem. And uh, if you appreciate these lessons on Wrath of Math every 48 hours, really appreciate it. If you hit the subscribe button, share the lessons with anyone you think would benefit from them. And if you'd like to help out the channel a little bit, check out the uh, link to our Patreon in the description. You can donate a buck a month, two bucks a month, whatever you want, or nothing. Just sharing the videos and subscribing is a great help. Really appreciate all of your support and feedback. And I will see you next time. Subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.